Hello everyone, welcome back to another model railroading video. Last time we went over the intended use of the Cato V1 track set. Today we're going to go over how I'm going to use it because I don't necessarily want a passing siding on my layout. So I have the camera set up to the part of my layout that I want to set this up on. Uh, I have it all rearranged and back to how it was before I had the V1 track set set up on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, cut the footage right here and then I'll build the track in the way that I want it and then you guys will see once I start filming again. Alright, it's kind of out of shot but there we go with how I want to use the set. We have a sort of um, rail yard that goes off to the side. Um, I don't know if you could really call it a rail yard, but I set, I set the track up this way just so I could, um, have something to properly use my switcher, which is from my Yard Boss starter set. So what I kind of want to do in this video is I want to set up some train cars in this sort of, uh, small rail yard and make up some sort of challenge for my switcher to do to set up a train not too exciting just wanted to show you guys what i wanted to use this track set for and it really just shows you that you don't have to use the track set for its intended purpose you can do whatever you want with the track it really just depends on what you want to do okay so there are all of the train cars that I want to have in this sort of challenge. Um, today's challenge is going to be relatively simple. We're just setting up two different trains. Uh, obviously, we're going to be having the passenger train. Uh, and then for the freight train, I want to have the box cars at the front. And the... No. No, not the box cars. I want the... Uh, hoppers to be at the front and then the boxcars to be in the back and then of course we need to have the caboose in the very back um, so yeah I'll just get the switcher going and then we'll see how it goes I have the camera set up so that we can see a majority of what we're working with so I'm not going to be moving the camera at all, I'm just going to be doing all of the operation of the switches and uh, the direction of the locomotive. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, I'm going to be trying to do this as realistically as possible, so that means I'm not going to use the whole track as a sort of loop, or at least I'm going to try my best not to. Uh, there might be something that I might have to use the whole loop for. Um, I'm not going to tell you guys quite yet, but as I'm analyzing how I'm going to do this, it might be necessary to use the whole track as a loop.
Yeah, so the switcher didn't quite work out as well as I hoped it would. Uh, it's not very strong and can't move a lot, but I think that's that's pretty much what real what a real switcher would be like. So I wasn't too surprised, um, and I'm actually impressed that the D51200 was able to pull that uh, passenger train because I know those passenger cars are pretty heavy. Um, yeah, so um, it looks like we were able to do it uh, realistically for the most part. Uh, we just had to use the D51 as a sort of helper uh, because the switcher could not pull it by itself. I mean, that's not even a really long train. Anyway, yeah. I thought that was really, I thought that was fun. And now we have the cabooses derailed again. I don't know why it keeps derailing. I hate that. And it's back on the track.